I'm welcoming you all to this video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Mr. Ish. We're looking here at this bevel disc and orbital circumference. It's a practical math exercise. It seems a little more technical than what it really is, but trust me, it will be an interesting subject for all of you, very related to 12th grade math level. A bevel disc, well, we have to start by defining what that is. A bevel is anything which relates to the angle in terms of an edge. I have what here is a bevel disc. It's a pink bevel disc, it's a solid. It looks like a small cylinder, but except for the fact that it's not a true cylinder, it has beveled edges. Bevel means angle. Let me draw it out exactly what I have here with regards to two dimension. If I'm looking at it front on, it's two dimension in terms of my image, and that's exactly what it is. But a bevel is anything which has an angle in terms of its edge. If you look at everything upwards in terms of your eyesight, then you're diverging away. These edges are diverging away. If you're looking everything from up down, like downwards, then when you look from above down, you're seeing that these edges are converging towards your center of this disc. But that's exactly what a bevel means. Anything which is angled at its edges. And here you know these two sides are not parallel by any means. If you're looking upwards, the sides are diverging. If you're looking downwards, the sides are converging towards the center. And this right here is a disc, but of course we're looking here at a three-dimensional object. And the three-dimensional object looks something like this. It may be a little exaggerated in terms of appearance, but that right there can be a beveled cup or a beveled disc. It's a thing I used to do as a kid, or probably many of you done. You're sitting on a table, you put this or something like this, a beveled cup even, a short cup, and you put it on the table and you roll it around, what happens? The disc or the cup starts rotating around a certain orbital path. And that's exactly what happens. If I were to draw an image of what we're talking about, let me make an attempt. Let me draw you two images. One where I have this incorrectly placed because you know it's not going to balance. It's not going to balance at its tip. It has to be, this edge has to be flush with the tabletop surface so you would draw it out again. I'm going to draw it out for you over here then I'll show you exactly what it is we're talking about with regards to the bevel disc and the orbital circumference which arises. You draw it out such that the bevel is flush with the, your tabletop surface. And now look at it. Here it's balancing at a tip which is impossible but when you lay it flush onto the ground onto your table, it's that one side is totally level with your table and then you give it like a little bit of a roll and then it starts assuming a orbital path and you know you can have the outer edge of this disc create a path and you can have the inner edge create a path but in this video I'm only looking at the outer edge and you know when you put something like this like a cup or a beveled disc onto a surface and you give it a little bit of roll and it starts going through this orbital path it does so because of this certain angle. The angle is right here with regard to this beveled surface. If you were to draw a perpendicular line over here, a vertical line, there's a certain angle that you are deviated away from that vertical line. That angle can be X. Anyhow, this orbital path that this type of an object or solid takes is related and dependent upon this angle of bevel. In this video, I want to show you how that bevel disc, the angle, creates a certain orbital circumference utilizing practical values and how all of that relates. How does the angle relate to the orbital circumference that will be created or the path and its circumference that arises? But before I do so, I want to show you practically what it is we're talking about so you see it with your own eyes before we actually do the calculation. So I'm going to take this little bevel disc I have and I'll put it on the board and you can watch it roll. When I give it a little bit of a tug, you'll always have this tendency to assume an orbital path, a circular path, because of the nature of that beveled edge right on the side. And let's watch it move. And it'll always want to assume that circular path because of that beveled edge. What we are interested in is calculating how that beveled angle gives rise to a circular path having a certain radius and a circumference. The calculation of this angle and the orbital circumference that an object such as this takes is by no means out of this world. You'll find it to be relatively interesting and simple. Start with a two-dimensional representation of exactly what it is you have. I have a disc which has a small angle. 
in terms of its bevel it's not very steeply beveled it has a shallow angle you can say I have a two dimensional representation what I want to do and I've measured it across the diameter of this across its 2.5 inches and then of course I'm looking here everything with regards to a center of axis from the center of axis to the edge you know now it's 1.25 inches that's exactly what I have but what is the angle of my bevel when I'm looking at this edge what is the angle against a vertical line and you can calculate it and I've calculated it and it happened to be 10 degrees we can say x was equal to 10 degrees the angle was 10 degrees now how does this bevel angle affect the orbital path or the circumference of that orbital path I'm calling it an orbit because it looks like a revolution when it moves it looks like a planet moving around the Sun and that's an orbital path how that angle determines the circumference is by the following means you have to determine the radius first if you were to take this angle the line and extend it all the way down imaginary and then take the center of line of axis and extend it all the way down at the point of that's exactly where the angle would hit an imaginary radius this right here would represent the center of a circle around which that orbital path is occurring because remember as this object is placed on a tabletop the bevel as you saw as I mentioned it to you earlier at any point only a single aspect of this object is touching the table it's not like a full solid is touching only a single line is touching at all times as it creates that orbital path that line just translates as it goes across and you have a circular path demonstrated from an object which is not truly circular and that's exactly how it works this intersection of these two points right here is something very easy and you know because you have a parallel line I'm extending this parallel line you have another parallel line which is your line of axis and in between what do you have the bevel the line the angle the line represents a transversal if that's 10 degrees this right here is 10 degrees and you've generated a 90 degree triangle and that's exactly what you have right here here's my angle right here 10 degrees I have this dimension already available 1.25 inches this right here represents a certain radius and all you have to do is utilize the tangent function and you can easily do that you know with regards to this angle 10 10 degrees is always equal to the opposite which is 1.25 inches divided by the adjacent which is your radius calculate that radius it's an easy calculation it'll be 1.25 divided by 10 in terms of its degrees 10 degrees and you have 7.089 inches I'm getting a value here 7.089 which I'm going to round to 7.1 inches so the radius here is right here is 7.1 inches from here you can do c equals 2 pi r you do 2 times pi times 7.1 and that will give you exactly the circumference of the orbital path I'll do 7.1 times pi times 2 and I've gone 44.6 inches and that right there would be the answer that I wanted all along an object a disc beveled disc or it doesn't even have to be a disc it could be a plastic cup or any cup which you which has a certain beveled surface when you roll it on the tabletop it assume a certain orbital path a circular path and that path has a certain radius it has a certain circumference and you can determine it exactly by means I have shown you this angle could have been easily determined by means of a protractor you can put a protractor here and get a good estimation of that you can calculate this diameter easily with a ruler all of these dimensions are real all of these dimensions are practically obtained look at everything here in terms of two parallel lines with a transversal do your trigonometry the tangent function and you get your answer right there and that exactly is what it is this specific disk with a small angle of 10 degrees has a pretty large radius in terms of the orbital path and a pretty large orbital circumference 44.6 as this angle becomes larger and more steep up to a certain point because if it becomes too steep you could never balance this on a tabletop it'll keep falling over but up to a certain point as you increase the angle this value over here will become small and this value will become small as well if you decrease the angle like to two degrees or three degrees a very lightly beveled disc or a cup then it will have a pretty large radius and have an even larger circumference and that's about all I wanted to show you in this video the bevel disc object and orbital circumference very much mirroring the concepts behind two parallel lines and a transversal with the tangent being brought into the picture thank you for watching have a good day bye